sisters rock their genes through meiosis. Have you ever wondered why all humans don't look the same? I know we all have different parents, but shouldn't all kids from the same set of parents be identical? Our unique individual traits come from a process called meiosis, where cells divide to create reproductive cells. Well, it's a rather interesting story about a group of sisters and their genes. I know what you're thinking, but it's not that kind of sisters, and it's not that kind of genes. It all starts with a human diploid cell that wants to become a reproductive cell, so it needs to go through the process of meiosis. Human diploid cells have 46 chromosomes in 23 pairs. One set of 23 chromosomes comes from the maternal side, or mom. You can see the maternal side here highlighted in red. The other 23 chromosomes come from the paternal side, or the dad, highlighted here in blue. In order to become a reproductive cell, the group of 46 chromosomes need to replicate and make exact copies of themselves. After replication, each chromosome has identical pairs of chromosomes called sister chromatids. That's 92 sisters in all. Now that's a lot of shoes. The sister chromatids are attached together in a spot called the centromere. Imagine being attached to your sister. The identical sister chromatids decided they didn't want to look like each other. So they came up with an idea. Let's exchange genes to get a cool new look. Remember, genes are not something you wear, but a code for your characteristics. You can see here one example of a gene coding for the trait of hair color. The process of exchanging genes is called crossing over and offers a recombination of genetic material making each chromosome different from the original. There are over 20,000 different types of genes found in the human, and only identical genes can switch places with each other. Pairs of maternal and paternal sister chromatids find their like pair and start exchanging genes with each other in this process called crossing over. After crossing over, you can see each chromatid has a different set of genetic material than its original. Now it's time for the sisters to split. The pairs of sister chromatids stay together and line up in the middle of the cell where spindle fibers attach to the centromere. The spindle fibers pull the chromosomes to opposite sides of the cell. The cell now divides into two daughter cells with 23 pairs of sister chromatids. Reproductive cells only have one set of chromosomes, which are called haploid cells. Therefore, the sisters will need to ditch their pair during reproduction, each parent will contribute one half the total chromosomes for a total of 46. So meiosis must continue with a second round of cell division. That's right, the sisters held together all this time by the centromere line up and are ripped apart by spindle fibers to opposite sides of the cell. The two daughter cells divide to create four haploid cells called gametes containing 23 individual chromosomes, the perfect number for a reproductive cell. Each one of these cells is unique thanks to genes crossing over and a shuffled combination of material from the maternal and paternal chromosomes. One of these lucky gamete cells will eventually meet the gamete cell of her dream and fuse together to create a unique person. How unique? Well, if you consider each parent contributes a combination of 23 chromosomes from their two sets of maternal and paternal chromosomes, this would create a 2 to the 23rd power, which equals about 8.4 million possibilities. That 8.4 million is only taking into consideration one parent. Now multiply this 8.4 million possibilities with the other parent and you get about 70 trillion
trillion possibilities. This 70 trillion doesn't factor in the crossing over 20,000 different genes. Once you factor that in, the possibilities become almost infinite. So, thanks to some sisters and their love for exchanging genes and the process of meiosis, we each have our own unique set of characteristics.